Many operations carried out by enforcement teams are based on information given by members of the public. In the northwest, intelligence is processed here at Brooklands in Manchester. The centre receives over a thousand calls every month. Today, an enforcement team led by immigration officer Rob Evans is about to act on one of the tip-offs. And we're going to Tarmin Indian Restaurant, Fairley Cottage, New Road. They've been told that two restaurants in Manchester are employing illegal workers. We've got a warrant, yeah, to enter and search the premises. How many staff have you got on? Uh, three of us have... Three. Of us waiters five. or two, two kitchen waiters. staff? Two waiters and two kitchen staff. Right, OK. Right, uh, we're the immigration service, so we conducted a visit here. We're just sweeping the premises at the minute and um, we're just seeing who's actually on the, the site and then we're going to identify a sterile area so we can interview all those working. Can we just ask you to pop over here? So? It's not quite the efficient execution the officers wanted. And now their intelligence is letting them down too. Do you know this person? He was meant to be working here. That's the information that we've received, so that's why we've conducted a visit today. So you, you don't know this person? There's no need to vote, I don't know. No. Right. No, you can go back to work, pal. Thanks very much. Thank you. 2003, you were granted indefinite leave to remain. OK. Um, they've all checked out, they're all fine. Three of them have got British passports, haven't they? And he, the guy that's just... Uh, the last one has been uh, granted and definitely leave to remain in 2003. But he's never been naturalised, but he doesn't have to be naturalised. He can just remain in the UK. The workers in the restaurant are all entitled to live and work in Britain. They find nothing to suggest the owner is employing illegal workers. All the enforcement team are left with is a bill for a broken table. The enforcement team move on to the second restaurant. Stop working, stop working, come out, now. Officers occasionally film their raids. This is part of their evidence gathering. It helps them to identify whether or not people are found working on the premises. Can you make way through there, please? Right, do you want to um, take a seat? The team find five employees. Now they want to know if the men are entitled to work in the UK. Pakistani, yeah, what's your immigration status in the UK? Itak Israel, stay was the work permit for ya. Shadi karke. Visitor. Visitor. He says he just come to see his uncle. Just come see your uncle, but you're working here, aren't you? You're a friend. You tell me you're not working here. So come with him over, man. You are. I can tell by what you wear. I can tell by your hands and your shoes and your t-shirt. You're working here? No, no, that's here. 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 He says he's coming to see him and he was helping him, he says. Yeah. Right, we can take your name, please. Yes, Mr. Mohammed Afzal. What's your date of birth, Mohammed? Somewhere 1951. What's your immigration status in the UK? Just about. You got a work permit? No. <laughs> One worker claims he has a work permit, but he says his passport is at a friend's house. The team check his details. When did you last enter the UK? The last, uh, what? One year? May. May 2007. Who has your passport? No, he has. He took it my passport. Your friend's got your passport? Yeah, yeah. I beg to differ, because I've got it. <laughs> it's downstairs. It was in your coat out there, your passport. So don't be telling us lies that your friend's got your passport. Tell the truth. I've got your passport and your identification card. No, this isn't mine. It is yours. <laughs> How can you say that's not you? No, it's time to tell the truth now. Tell us the truth. 
You last came to the UK in February 2006, according to your passport. So you've been here for over two years without leaving the UK. Yeah? Yeah. So you're actually here illegally at the moment, aren't you? Yes. And you're working illegally in this takeaway, yes? Yes. Thank you very much. Just stay there. Two suspected illegal workers are arrested. Both men have since been removed back to Pakistan. Their employer is fined £10,000. Coming up, the student at Heathrow who doesn't seem to study. Since September, they've confirmed to us that you've not attended any classes. I'm inclined to believe what they're saying. Stay with this gentleman here. Sorry about that. And illegal car washers who appear to use vanishing cream. Where's our friend gone? Right, keep the radio clear, please, guys. I think we've got runners. In 2007, almost 350,000 non-EU students came to study in Britain. Over 10,000 from Pakistan. What, why have you come here to the UK? One student has aroused the suspicions of the immigration officers at Heathrow's Terminal 3. He's returning to the UK after a trip home for some unusual surgery. Officer Newbury takes on the case. We get people going home for all sorts of treatments because obviously in the UK they got entitled for the free treatment on the NHS, so they have to pay for it and it's quite expensive for them to pay for it, so a lot of them do choose to go home. This is the first time I've had someone go home to have a hair transplant. Um, this is definitely a, a first for me. Um, he's been away for six weeks. The thing that initially tipped off the officer was the fact that um, I think he said that um, he travelled direct from Hounslow to his college at London Bridge on the Piccadilly line um, without actually changing, which I think is actually impossible. You need, to, you need to change. Officer Newbury wants to make sure the passenger is a genuine student and that he isn't working more than a foreign student's maximum allowance of 20 hours a week. What, why have you come to the UK? You came in yesterday. Why have you come to the UK? Uh, he said, uh, I come for study. In Western College, London. Western College? Western College. And what subject do you study? Uh, sir, I uh, diploma in study. Business study. Business study? Yeah, definitely business study. You said you had surgery in Pakistan? Yes, yeah, sir. What was, what was that for? Yeah, it's for hair surgery, sir. Hair surgery? Oh, yeah, hair surgery. Okay. okay. How much did that surgery cost you? I had currencies. Uh, 500 pounds. Cost 500 pounds in Pakistan, yeah? yeah? Do you work in the UK? Yes, sir. What do you work as? I just work with a recruitment company, and after that, they send me uh, some other reports for packing something. So just packing, just packing yeah? Yeah, just. Is it just like, just labour? Uh, yeah, just. just uh, with uh, your hands? Tree, tree, yeah. Something straight. How, how many hours do you work a week? Yes, uh, it's 20 hours. 20 hours exactly, weekend. exactly 20 yeah, hours. Yeah, 20 hours. We got two days of work. What what normally, days do you work? Normally Sunday. Okay, you say you study 18 hours a week. What days do you study? The study is uh, Monday, uh -huh. t uh, Tuesday, uh -huh. and Friday. On uh, I just study two uh, subjects, and managerial uh, management. Just, is it management or managerial? Managerial. Man just managerial, managerial. it's called? Managerial management. Managerial management? Yeah. And what hours? Uh, it's uh, from 11 to, t 11 to uh, 3. On Tuesday, what do you study? Uh, on Tuesday is a, a, manage is a marketing. Marketing? Yeah. And that's what hours? Uh, it's the same hours. 11 to it's 3. 11 to 3. And on Friday? And on Friday, same hours. 11 to 3? Yeah, 11 to 3. Yes. That's 12 hours a week? Uh, Where's the other six hours that you say you study a week? The six hours, I just, um, I just spent over there. 
Sometimes I uh, I discussions with the friends. Uh, discussions. Uh, I, I'm, I'm more concerned about the time the timetabled hours. Yeah. yeah, not not meeting up with friends. Right. It's timetabled yeah. hours in a classroom with a tutor talking to you about your modules. Mr. Raymond wants to come into the UK on a student visa. Officer Newbury is not convinced, but needs hard evidence before he can refuse the man entry. In Essex, enforcement teams regularly visit businesses they believe are employing illegal workers. Today's target, car washers in supermarket car parks. Intelligence has been received that African and South American males are working as hand car washers at supermarket sites and car dealers across Essex. Risk assessment, this is a medium risk operation. All officers and observers to wear issued personal protective equipment and check it's in working order. Specific risks for this operation, officers be mindful of the risk of clean chemicals being used as weapons. Arrests to be made if deemed appropriate. With the car washers quickly rounded up, the team want to know their identities. OK, sir, can you have your right hand? Using a mobile fingerprint unit, the officers will soon know who is legal and who is not. Mehdi Bakish? Yeah. Right. Mehdi Bakish. 7 August 77. Yeah. Iranian national, male. Right. ASU. Bravo, 111 Faz. Not allowed to work. A Faz is a failed asylum seeker. This man has been refused permission to stay in the UK. You're under arrest as a person liable to be detained. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned, something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence, all right? OK. Right, before we put you in the vehicle, we need to search you. The guy we've just arrested is an Iranian who have been proved to be a failed asylum seeker. So he doesn't have permission to work. He is removable from the UK if we can find a document uh, at his home address. So that's the intention, is to go to his home address and uh, see if we can find a, a passport or anything to um, get a document for him. She understands, OK? Personal loyalty is attained by immigration. Don't have to say anything, but it may harm the defence. The team arrest four other suspected illegal workers, and their documents must also be searched for. All the men claim to live in the same house, only a short walk away. Gloves on. A lot of these places are all um, multi-occupancy, multi lots of foreign nationals all living in uh, um, bed sits and uh, paying a lot of money to um, uh, landlords. OK, start searching. Do you want to take that side or are we going to do it methodically? Passport is the essential thing which we're, we're trying to find. That's the key to everything. Passport or anything with um, proof of identity. Because without, without that, the Iranians won't entertain any application to uh, get him a document whatsoever. It's very rare that we find them, but one day we will do. Searching can be a dirty job, but this time it's a dangerous one too. We've just been advised that uh, one of the uh, detainees we've been arrested is a possible heroin addict. So we've got to watch out for sharps. Julie, we've got some drugs in the uh, back room here which may relate to the heroin user. Do you want to ask him if they are his and if he needs them? The team find a heroin substitute, but no documents with ID. Got from the library. However, Officer Dan finds evidence of a misdemeanour that falls outside his jurisdiction. 2006. If we can't, if we can't nick him for immigration offences, we're looking for an open book library, yeah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> But because the book is a manual for a jet fighter, the team alert special branch, just in case. At Terminal 3, the foreign student who went home to Pakistan for a hair transplant is still being questioned by Officer Newbury. Where do you live in the UK? Uh, sir, I live in Huntsville. Where is your college based? In, uh, so this college uh, is in Bro High Street. Where, sorry? Bro High Street, B R O U G H. Bro High Street? Yeah, Bro High Street. OK. How do you get from Hounslow to your college? Uh, I go to Hounslow by tube. 
I okay, so I want you to is. explain to me what your route is. I know you told the, the officer earlier that you go direct from Hounslow to London Bridge on a Piccadilly line, uh, yeah, which Piccadilly. you can't do. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. so I want you to explain to me what your route is. Yeah, I told you, it's, a, it's Piccadilly line from Hounslow to... and uh, and and, uh, I, uh, and and I don't know, is is some stop I, I, I put off uh, and change something other. You don't know what stop that is? Uh, pardon? You don't know what stop? Well, uh, I don't know what stop, but I um, uh, but I think so. Is, uh, I just take in uh, is uh, is other line one because I most of the time I go with my f uh, friends. One of my colleagues contacted your college okay. and asked them to confirm your attendance on your course. Okay. What do you think they said to us? Okay, so you you don't know. Okay. Yeah. They've, they've confirmed to us in writing that you've not attended your college since September 2007. No, sorry, it's not possible. Not possible. Are you saying that they're lying? Yeah, it's been lying. Yeah. Okay. But, but one, one letter I have also. Well, that, that's what they've sent us. Okay, that was sent to us. Okay. Since September, they've confirmed to us in writing, as you can see, that you've not attended any classes. They've also confirmed what modules you should be studying, and they're not the ones that you've told me today. So how, how do you explain that? I'm inclined to believe what they're saying. So I want you to tell me, what have you been doing in this country since September 2007? I don't know where it is. You don't know? No, sir. Stop the interview for the moment, and I'll come back and speak to you a bit later, yes, and we'll try and get to the bottom of this. It's quite obvious that he's been he's been caught out. He's played the game. I assume he's been working for the last six months, probably, probably full time. He's probably made a bit of money out of it. He's been caught, but he just won't admit it. If there is clear evidence a foreign student is working more than the permitted 20 hours, or is not attending his course, he will be refused entry. Officer Newbury refers the case to the Chief Immigration Officer. Do you think, in your opinion, that we have sufficient information as, as things stand for us to cancel it without uh, necessarily having the information from the, from the employers, yes. from, the from the interview notes that you've done so From far. interview notes and from um, what okay. the college has sent us this morning, mm -hmm. I think we have got sufficient information to cancel his UKRP okay. and um, return him back to Pakistan. Right, fine. I'm, I'm authorising uh, that recommendation. OK, I've actually um, spoken to the Chief Immigration Officer with regards to your case. He has decided to believe what the College have said, because they have no reason to lie to us, and we are going to be refusing your entry to the United Kingdom, cancelling your visa, and returning back to Pakistan on an expedible flight. OK? You do not give me a, a, a right of appeal. That's what I was going to come to next. So those, those are two options that you have in front of you. You can either stay in the UK for five days to appeal, and you'll be in detention for five days. Or you can return to Pakistan and you've got 28 days to make an appeal out of country. So I need to know now what your option is, what, what you decide you want to do. I must stay. I want to appeal here. You want to appeal in country. You want to stay for five days in detention. Yeah. You won't be allowed entry into the UK. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? OK. The basis of your argument going to be that the college is lying. Why call us and uh, like this letter? He, he what do you think the judge will think, though, when he sees this, ri this written information from the college confirming, in writing, signed by the college, saying that you've not attended for six months? Uh, you're going to spend five days in a detention, a detention centre to appeal against this just to, on the fact that you think that the college is lying and you're insisting on staying in this country to appeal, yes, sir. even though you've got nothing to appeal against? Yes. You're just going to waste everyone's time? Yes, it's, a, it's, it's, waste, it's a waste of our, of our, of our of ta of a taxpayers' money, isn't it? Well, I've, I've tried to help, but that's it. OK, I'll pop you back in the holding room now. Thank you very much, sir. Try to follow me, please. Well, he's got a right of appeal, but he's got no, no case. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to base his appeal on. He's just trying to waste everyone's time, um, and he knows it. And it's, just, it's just frustrating. Um, there's not a thing we can do about it. The man was granted temporary admission to lodge his appeal. 
He later withdrew the appeal, but remains in Britain awaiting the outcome of a judicial review. In Essex, the enforcement team has moved on to another supermarket car park. And they think they're on to more illegal workers. Hello, mate, from immigration. You got any, got any ID on you? You got a wallet? One of these. You got one of these? The pocket? Ali Muhammad. Yeah, anything in there with your name? No. Okay, just wait with me, then we'll come and have a chat. Stay with this gentleman here. Officer Dan has found a worker who isn't too keen to answer his questions. Was that thing done? Yes, sorry, I'm sorry. Right, keep the radio clear, please, guys. I think we've got runners. Yeah, guy in his late 50s, 5'5", five five, uh, unshaven, dark skin, Iranian national. The two people have run off from the site have been picked up. Uh, we put the call out to the local police and uh, looks as like if they've been uh, detained by a local police unit. Oh, here he is. Thank you, gentlemen. No worries. Uh, well, I thought it was one, but <laughs> he, was the, he was the one, yeah. The team are reunited with their runner, along with two others they didn't know had gone. Okay, you two come over here. Yeah, well, you ran away, mate. You shouldn't have done that. To remove illegal workers, they must first find evidence of who they are and where they're from. What's your name? Muhammad. Muhammad? Hussein. Hussein? Yes. Akdar. Passport? No, no passport. No? No. <laughs> Alibaba. Alibaba. Address? No. Address? Yeah. Here? Square. Yeah. Chris, what's a wallet in French? Portfolio. A portfolio? No. Gentlemen, you've, you've been arrested by the police. You're further arrested as persons liable to be detained under Schedule 2 of the Immigration Act. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Probably not, but... No, you're under arrest. Everybody have children, everybody have yeah. wife, everybody rent house, my Iran, Iran, no, but everybody yeah, not working, no Iran, stay here. Yeah, you're not allowed to, are you? You're not working legally, that's what it's all about. Thank you very much for your help. There's people in, in this country who haven't got jobs. In the two car parks, the team arrested 11 suspected illegal workers. All were Iranian nationals. One man is later removed from Britain. The others are on reporting conditions, while the Immigration Service await their travel documents. Coming up, suspicions of tampering with trucks. Cut through the tilt cord, and they've pinned it back together and glued it as well. And the sex offender caught out in Manchester. Dallas Court in Salford is one of Britain's 14 immigration reporting centres. This is where illegal workers are asked to report, as well as foreign criminals and asylum seekers. Each is given a registration card that stores personal information, such as fingerprints. This means the border agency knows where people are while their cases are decided. Fortnightly, every two weeks. Okay, so next week you don't need to come. Week after you come. In return for registration, many are given upwards of thirty-three pounds a week to live on. Have your fingerprint, please. Today is no ordinary day at the reporting centre. Immigration officers are plotting to arrest and deport a known sex offender. They watch him arrive on CCTV. His victim was a 12-year-old girl. He thinks he's here to report as usual. There's several warnings, violence warnings, against this, uh, this young man. And it's part of the uh, contingency plans that we have police officers present. Risk assessment dictates that police officers will be present on the day. 
But yeah, there are warning signs, so I've got to take the necessary measures to make sure that I'm safe and all the other staff are safe. Playing it cool, they let him enter the building. Watching him closely, they are in no rush to make a move. He'll go into the main reporting centre to, um, to sign on, as he does every single week. When he does, I'll go and uh, I'll approach him then and just uh, ask him to, to leave the reporting centre and I'll, I'll bring him round to the detention room. He'll be allowed legal representation, he'll to phone his family. So, and that'll be it. Fresh from prison, he's wearing a tag. We're just going to go into the back office now and I'm going to take the tag off. Okay. All right. I've got some papers to serve and I want to explain them to you, but you'll be all right. Officer Emmett is doing his best to keep the situation calm. Let's have a seat in here, fella. Sit yourself down over here, young man. Morning. Sit yourself down. Which leg are you tagged on? That one, there. That one. <coughs> Want to put your foot up there? To keep still. Take your foot. Right, I mean, obviously I've taken your tag off today. What I'm going to do is now is serve papers. I've been instructed to detain you today, pending your deportation from the United Kingdom. What's going to happen now is one of my colleagues is going to search you. You've been searched before. That's to ensure your safety and our safety. So could you just stand up, please? Okay. Step away from this one. Put your hands up for me, thank you. Is there a necklace on you, Pull your pockets out, that's it. That's it, thank you. Do you understand what's happening? That's it. Yeah. If it's possible to notify my legal representative. I'll be doing that straight away. I'll be faxing everything that you've been told today and every form that you've had felt served on you today. I'll be faxing that in the next five minutes to your solicitor. Okay. And is it possible to come or not? Because she's actually waiting for me. Right. This, these gentlemen here will make that decision. Where is she? She's at home. She's at home? Yes. We'll go out there, Gaz. I have no objection yeah, to okay. that. Okay, but she's over here, Gaz. Have you got a number for home, Gaz? As soon as we get a movement, mate, I'll be back up. Yes, hello, Mum. Um, sit down. Can you sit down, please? <coughs> yes, Mum, sit down. No. Sure. Okay, I wanted to sign in today. So it's two years. And they're uh, detaining me. <coughs> Um, they're about to take me to London now. He served the full four years of his prison term. His deportation is the final part of his sentence. It's one thing removing people who shouldn't be in the country. It's quite another stopping them before they get to the UK. The port of Calais provides one of the best opportunities for illegal entry. Living rough just outside the port are hundreds of people. Their aim is to try and outfox the immigration officers. In 2007, immigration officers stopped over 12,000 people trying to cross the channel. No sale. Officers John Cassidy and Emma Matthews are starting their shift. They'll spend the night checking trucks just before they board ferries bound for Britain. We're now 2.23 in the morning. We're in the shed at Calais, and we're trying to find the legal entrance hiding in the back of vehicles. At the moment, I'm going to use a CO2 unit probe. The probe is inserted into the vehicle where it will draw air in. The air will be analysed by this machine here. It'll tell us how much the CO2 reading is compared to the oxygen. It's an indicator. If there's a lot of CO2, it could possibly be someone inside. Because I'm near the exhaust, when you probe at the front, it picks up the fumes when the, the vehicle first comes in. So it can, you can get quite a lot of false readings. Yeah, my, I've got five. Technology is a useful tool, but so are experience and a nose for the job. Often the uh, people we're looking for. Um, Having sit around campfires, I usually live a bit rough in the woods, etc. And uh, they can smell the campfires they sit around. So that very uh, strong burning smell that associated with a bonfire or such. Plus, um, cleanliness tends to go out the window slightly once they've been living rough for a few weeks. So they have a very distinctive smell about them that you can often get the minute you open the door. You've got some footmarks, aren't you?
Has he got a German passport? Sorry? Has he got a German passport? Yeah. So I've got a feeling it's probably clear because the way the boxes are collapsing underneath Mark's knees, I'm sure they would have left some marks if they'd actually crawled up the same space. But it has got a strong smell of burning in here. They're a little bit weak. Sometimes you go through these, they look fairly rigid as you go across and all of a sudden they just give way underneath you. So you have to be careful. Plus it's people's loads. You know, they're expensive cargo sometimes and uh, you try to be careful as you go across them. I think it's fairly clear under here. No sign of any stowaways. But the team check if the driver has made any stops where illegal entrants may have got in. That's fine. Thanks, Sean. That's good, Mark. I didn't know you spoke Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be the same. in there, didn't it? I, I thought there was definitely something in there. It, it's very promising when you opened it, yeah. Well, bring on the next contestant then, I think. The Nigerian sex offender has been held in a London detention centre for a week. Today, he's being deported. No one is taking any risks. Four security guards will escort him all the way to Lagos, Nigeria. In 2007, over 4,000 serious criminals, including murderers, Sex offenders and drug dealers were deported from Britain. On arrival in Lagos, the security guards will hand him over to the Nigerian authorities. It's now four in the morning, and so far the search team in Calais have not caught anyone trying to cross the border. Every week, search teams open up around 4,000 trucks looking for illegal entrants. And with an average of more than 30 fines a day, the officers are not giving up yet. The team get a lorry that's come from Belgium. They want to take a closer look. Before opening up, they photograph the lock. This proves the truck is sealed and the driver has protected his vehicle from being used as a free lift to Britain. Got a reading with the uh, CO2 probe at the back that was relatively high, which makes us think we ought to have a look inside. It indicates that there's a high CO2 reading. It could be nothing at all, but the fact there is a reading there means we have to check it out. The truck's carrying sofas wrapped in plastic. The only way to find out if someone's inside is to get in and search. There is, I would say there is a strong smell. The smell isn't the only clue that the truck may be carrying more than freight. OK, the cushions are being removed from the sofa. If you look at the rest here, they're sealed up with the cushions inside. So the minute we saw that this was outside, it means someone's been disturbing it. And obviously they're trying to hide. And what they've done is... It's just now. You might see your head right down the bottom there. You'd have to come Sorry? quite forward. Right down there, see his head? Not right now. I just want to see how many there are. Can you see that in there? Have you got him? So there's at least one. But the way these are going here, there could well be a few more. Matt, I'd be very surprised if he is the only one. Well, what are you doing, mate? Just grab my legs. Oh, we've got two, at least. Tickets. No tickets. End of the ride then, Jeff. Stay there. Stay right. there. Wait. OK, then we'll get you out one at a time, all right? Do you understand? Do you understand? OK. It's all right, stay there. All right. Wait. One minute, yeah? One, stay. Maybe they 
Cut. Chief Immigration Officer Kerry Lockie wants to know how the stowaways got in without the driver knowing. What we're doing is we're checking the tilt cord. This, this is a tilt cord that goes through um, all these latches here on the tarpaulin. We're just checking to see whether it's been cut and pinned, as they call it, because this was sealed. So the only way that they could possibly have got in is by cutting it um, and then resealing it so that the driver, when he does his checks, he wouldn't be aware that they've been able to get in. They're very, very quiet, aren't they? Um, we often find that Indians are one of the most compliant uh, personnel we find, and they do as they're told, they just sit there very quietly, a bit disappointed, but they're, they're usually good as gold. They come out quietly, they don't give any trouble, they give you their names when you ask them. This is what we want, this is what we're here for. It, a night becomes a long night with just the same old lorries and no results. Uh, this reminds me what it's all about. Just start extracting the first one out. OK. OK. What they've done here is they've cut through the tilt cord and they've pinned it back together and glued it as well. You will actually see that there is actually a pin in there. So it's very difficult for the actual driver to see what's gone on there. And by pulling it, because what the lorry drivers tend to do is we'll go along and pull the tilt cord to make sure that it's all intact. Of course, that's not gonna, that's not gonna give. So he'd have had no idea. Their desire to get to England is so strong, so they will do anything to actually get there, and um, and they have people that organise this for them. So they're very skilled, you know, put people actually putting them into the lorries themselves. So they know what to do. They know what what shortcuts they can take as well. So you know, it's a it's a hard thing to call for the lorry drivers, really. The team will fingerprint and photograph the two stowaways before handing them over to the French authorities. But without the documents required to send them back home, on this occasion, all the French can do is remove them from the port. Coming up, being in the wrong place at the wrong time for a customer in a cake shop. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being an illegal entrant in the country. It's estimated there are around a million illegal immigrants in Britain. One of the jobs of the UK border agency is to track them down and remove them from the country. Right, this briefing is for Operation Bernard's. Op Bernard's concerns a visit to a sweet centre called Mushtax. A Midlands enforcement team are preparing to raid a cake shop or sweet centre which they believe is employing illegal workers. None of these gentlemen show up in any Home Office records as having entered the UK lawfully, and none of them show up as having made any applications for further leave to remain. This is not the first time they've targeted the shop. The last time, the suspects escaped from the back of the building. Today, the element of surprise is key. Stop! 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 The team splits with some officers heading for the accommodation upstairs. They find one man still in bed, fully clothed. Shoes. Ah, shoes in. Don't run! So have you got any, any, any idea at all, any bank cards, anything with your name on? All the Southampton. All in Southampton. Yeah. How did you get up here? Huh? How did you get here? Uh, five years. No, no, how, how did you get here from Southampton? Did you drive? Did you get the train? No, no, it came in bus, bus. In the bus? Yeah, in bus. And we got a bus pass around the night. Got a wallet? Huh? Wallet? Sorry? A wallet. Yeah, John, we've got an Afghani Where chap up here. I'm having a bit of trouble communicating yeah, with him, but he says he, uh, he has, he's in the system, so he should come yeah, up on live scan. Can I take him downstairs to get that sorted? Hey, we need some papers. ID papers, bank card, driving licence. All the... All card. the... So you have nothing? Nothing here, my my friend. Yeah, I think quick checks him the quickest way of doing it. He's not even sure how to spell his own name, so uh, I'll bring him down now. Have you ever used one of these before? This isn't store your fingerprints, it just scans them and it checks them, it sends them off and it checks them with our systems, okay? That's great. Take a seat again. And we'll know exactly who you are in five minutes. Do you have any ID? Everyone in the shop is questioned. Even those who have just come in to buy a cake. Oh, he doesn't matter. We're still going to speak to him. 
ਕੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਅਪਲਾਈ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਵਿਜ਼ਿਟ ਆਏ ਸੀ ਵਿਜ਼ਿਟ ਆਏ ਬਟ ਵਿਜ਼ਿਟ ਆ 6 ਮੰਥਸ ਮੈਕਸਿਮਮ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਮੰਥ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਆਈ ਅਰਾਈਵ ਇਨ ਦਿਸ ਸਟਾਫ ਫੋਰ ਇਅਰਸ ਅਗੋ ਅਲੈਜਡਲੀ ਅਪਲਾਈਡ ਫੋਰ ਐਨ ਐਕਸਟੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਸਟੇ ਹੈਸ ਹਾਰਡ ਟੂ ਅਨਾਉਂਸਰ ਸੋ ਵਾਟਸ ਹਿਸ ਫੁੱਲ ਨੇਮ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਫਾਦਰ ਫੁੱਲ ਨੇਮ ਰਸ਼ੀਦ ਹੁਸੈਨ ਹੈ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਸੋ ਐਨੀ ਅਦਰ ਨੇਮ ਫੋਰ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਨਾ He said he came in four years ago as a visitor and has apparently made an application for an extension of stay. Everyone who is legally in the UK should be on record. But the unfortunate customer doesn't seem to exist. I think he might have given a bogus date of birth. No trace. Yeah, we'll put him on the quick check unit. If the man has applied for an extension to his visa, he should be on the home office database. It's bad news for the customer. Yeah, he's come back as no match and that's nothing on the system at all. It means he's not known to us as an asylum claimant at this point. OK, right, well, if you can just listen carefully to what we're going to say, I'm arresting you on suspicion of being an illegal entrant in the country. And now the results have come through for the Afghan worker found upstairs. <laughs> OK, here we go. We've got a possible identification. Khaled Kakasar. Yeah. It's not what you told me earlier. Yeah? <laughs> came in on the back of a lorry in Dover. Is that, what, is that what happened? You came in the back of a lorry? <laughs> yeah, of course it was. <laughs> you have exhausted all your appeal rights to be in the UK. Okay, so I'm detaining you to affect your removal from the UK. Just uh, translate, please. Okay, you are under arrest. Come on, mate. Yeah, sorry, with me. Okay, no, no, no. You're no, going to no. have to go straight to that. No, you're going to have to go straight to that. Listen, please, no, mate. No. This is no. I'm sorry, Come it's on. too late for that. You've lied to us already. You're going to have to go straight to that. Okay. Somebody, you just look at that. You hit that? Is that his? Yeah, he's hid it. It turns out the arrested customer does have an ID card. It was under the counter. He'd thrown it there when the officers turned up. Got the date of birth the wrong way round. He's got the gate told us first the fifth, not fifth of the first. With the man's details, the immigration team confirmed he arrived as a tourist four years ago. His visa expired and he stayed in Britain illegally. The customer is later released on bail to wait for his removal papers. He's told to report to his local reporting centre. He does. The worker is sent home to Afghanistan and the owner is fined 10,000 pounds. <laughs>